Boom, bang, bam, kerflop, thwonk. Sound effects are a big part of comic language. They add energy and personality to our panels. I'm gonna show you how to use Clip Studio Paint to quickly turn the dial on your sound effects up to 11. Hey, Walter here. I love creating fun sound effects for my comics. It's like lettering, but you get to make up all of your own rules. So Clip Studio Paint was awesome enough to sponsor this video. So today we get to take a simple looking sound effect like this and turn it into something more professional looking like this instead. Not only will this bring your panels to life, but it will also elevate your comics appearance with technical execution and that professional polish that we all want. The best part is you can do this really fast in Clip Studio Paint. It doesn't take a whole lot of work to achieve unique and dynamic sound effects. There's a corresponding written tutorial on Clip Studio's tutorial site as well. The link to that will be in the video description. And if you're new to lettering in Clip Studio, I suggest checking out my Clip Studio lettering video as well. All right. Everyone ready? Let's make some noise. The first thing you'll want to do is find a good font for your sound effect. It makes a huge difference. You know, Arial font here just doesn't have the same impact on the page as good old bada boom. If you're looking for fonts, I highly recommend blambot.com. Professional quality fonts at mega affordable prices. A lot of them are free for independent creators. Uh, case in point, the font we're using today is called Bada Boom. One of my main go-to fonts for sound effects in my comics. And as long as you're an independent creator, you get to use this font for free in your comics. So download the font, install it on your device or your computer's operating system. Clip Studio's font library is derived from your device's operating system. You don't actually install the font into Clip Studio like you would say a brush. Just Google your device and install font and you'll find tons of tutorials out there. Now when you select the text tool in your tool palette, you'll be able to choose the font you've installed from this drop down box here. So I'm going to be selecting Bada Boom, the one I got from Blambot.com, but you can do this with whatever font your heart desires. Don't worry too much about the color or the size of the font at this point. Now simply click on your canvas and you'll see a text box appear where you can type in your sound effect. Now a good font can go a long way to making a sound effect look spiffy all on its own, but we're going to push this even more. Instead of just typing the entire sound effect out, let's type it letter by letter. This is going to allow us to control and manipulate each letter individually. With the text tool, click on the canvas, type the letter B, and then hit the check to complete your entry. You can also just click outside of the text box to complete the entry as well. Now click on the canvas again to open a new text entry box and hit O and keep repeating this until you've entered all of your letters. You should have something that looks like this, letters all over the place, and you'll have multiple new layers in your layer window. Some of the letters may be on their own layer or sharing a layer with one of the other letters. This is completely fine. We're going to merge all of these new letter layers into a single layer anyways, just to keep things organized. In your layer window, click on the top letter layer, hold shift on the keyboard and click on the bottom layer. You should select all of them. You can also hold down the control key on your keyboard or command on Mac and then click the layers one at a time. Now go to the layer menu and select merge selected layers. Or you could right click on the layer window and select merge selected layers in the pop-up menu that appears. Now for the really cool part, select your object tool in your tool palette or you can hit O on your keyboard. By the way, keyboard shortcuts are life. They are a bit of a pain to learn at first, but they've made drawing digitally so much more enjoyable for me. I even got a Bluetooth keyboard that I use when I'm using my iPad and Clip Studio Paint. Okay, so with the object tool, you can select one of these layers and a blue box is going to appear around the letter. This box lets you resize and rotate the letter. Hold down shift on the keyboard while you're resizing if you wanna keep your current aspect ratio of the letter, meaning you don't want to stretch it or squash it. You also have the option of using menu, edit, transform, skew for some other really cool effects. Once you get a hang of transforming the letters, it's time to put on your artist hat 
and create some sound effect art. Transform, rotate, move the letters to get them to fit the action of the panel. This is the fun part. Go nuts. Really jumble up the letters. Make it unique. Make it fit the artwork in the panel. Make it organic. The sound effect could be mirroring the action or it could even be affected by the action. Like maybe it's being blown apart by the explosion. So this is what I came up with. You can see I even created more O letters because it's not a boom. It's a boom. To do this, just select the text tool again and type in new letters, or you can use the object tool, select a letter, copy it using Control C or Command C, or you can also use the edit menu and click copy, and then just paste it using Control or Command V or the edit menu and paste. Remember to merge all of your layers into a single layer like we did earlier to keep the layers organized. Now we got a dynamic looking sound effect. If your mind is blown or maybe even just slightly tingling, make sure to hit that like button or subscribe if you haven't already because I do stuff like this all of the time. Okay, so this is looking really good, but it ain't got that pop yet and we know we need some pop. So create a new layer above our sound effect layer by clicking on the new layer button in the layer window. Now click on the clip to layer below button to clip this new layer to the sound effect layer. You should see this pink bar appear on the layer you just created. Now a clip layer will only affect the layer to which it's clipped, which is really useful for coloring, which is what we're about to do. Instead of selecting a font color, we're actually going to color our sound effect just like we would our own artwork. Now with this technique you could go crazy with your coloring and take a lot of time and render the sound effect. However, I find a single solid color or a simple two-tone gradient is usually enough. But the sky's the limit and I'll leave that up to you and your time budget. Okay, so select the lasso tool from your marquee select tool palette and do a rough selection around your entire sound effect. Maybe double the size of the sound effect. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, select a color that makes sense for your sound effect. Sometimes you're gonna wanna mimic the color of the panel, like a yellow or a red for an explosion, but other times you may want to pick a color that's opposite of the panel so that the sound effect will really stick out and pop and be visible. Here, I'm just gonna choose a red because I think that's gonna pop off of the dark purple background color. Now simply fill our new layer with this color using the paint bucket or go to your edit menu and fill or alt delete on your keyboard. Notice how only the letters are red and not the entire area that we had selected. If we turned off clip layer below, you'd see that this entire area is actually full of the color and we turn clip layer below back on and voila, it's like magic. Now we could leave it like this if we wanted. I will often do this just for small or less important sound effects. However, for this panel, I think we can spend a little bit of more time and add a gradient to really make it stick out. A gradient is a computer generated gradual transition from one color to one or more other colors. So select your gradient tool. I like to keep my gradient tool on foreground to transparent and a low opacity setting like 19. In this case, we want the gradient shape to be a straight line. Now select a bright yellow color on the color wheel and apply the gradient to our red color. Simply click on the canvas below the sound effect and drag upwards. You'll see a yellow gradient appear. Now you may have to do several passes to get it to look the way you want it, uh, but I prefer this control of the low opacity versus doing a single pass at a hard 100% opacity, but that's personal preference. Once you got that looking good, it's time to get fancy. Select both of our layers, the sound effect and clip layer, just shift click each layer. We're going to group these layers into a folder. Go to your layer menu and click create folder and insert layer. Now our layers are grouped into this new folder layer. This is going to allow us to pull off this really cool feat of awesome. Select the folder layer and turn on the border effect in the layer property window. If you don't have the layer property window, go to your window menu and make sure to turn on the layer property window. Now select a different border color. I'm going to choose another really bright yellow and I'm also gonna increase the thickness of the edge. Adjust the thickness to your artwork, but usually I have it around the same thickness as what I have for a word balloon. It's just a good starting place. If we wanted to get really crazy, we could put our new folder into another folder, go to the layer menu, 
select create folder and insert layer once again. Now select this new folder that we've created and turn on the border effect on this one as well. Pick a different color, increase the thickness of edge. Now it is looking super fancy and of course we could add more borders by creating more folders. Uh, two is usually more than enough though. Most often I only use one, but a second one can help to create a stronger silhouette if the sound effect is getting lost in the artwork. Okay, so this looks really good, but I did cover up a fair amount of the artwork. Now, I could just make our sound effect smaller, but I actually have a better solution than that. We're gonna use masks. Masks allow us to select pieces of a layer and make them invisible. It's sort of like erasing, but without actually losing or destroying anything. So select the topmost folder of our sound effect and click on the Create Layer Mask button you'll see a white box appear on the folder layer. You'll also want to make sure that the mask is selected by looking for the white highlight around the box, the mask box that just appeared on the layer window. Make a selection on your canvas for the parts of the sound effect you would like to mask, the parts you don't wanna see the parts where you want the artwork to actually show through the sound effect. You could do this with the lasso tool, but I'm going to do it with the auto select tool. I'll go to my color flats layer, click on the canvas to select all of the parts that are the explosion, and then expand the selection just a little to include the line art as well. Go to the menu, select, expand selected area, and enter a pixel width that closely matches your line art width. If you make it too small or too large, don't worry, you can hit Control Z or go to the edit menu and undo and then re-enter a better size. Once you're done with your selection, go back to your sound effect folder. Make sure the mask is selected and just hit delete on your keyboard or go to edit, delete on your menus. The area you had selected should become invisible and you should be able to see your artwork through your sound effect. If this doesn't work, make sure your mask is active and selected in the layer window over here. Side note, if you want to remove parts of the mask, just select those areas and fill it in with a color or go to your edit menu and hit fill. And just like that, as the lettering says, boom, you've got yourself some high octane professional sound effects. The best part, if you're smart, you'll create a sound effects library for yourself. So select the topmost layer, name it something appropriate like boom, so you know what the folder actually contains and you're not confused. Go to your menu, select and then select all, and then copy by going to menu, edit and copy or control or command C. Now create a new canvas file, new canvas, and go to edit menu and hit paste to paste the sound effect in this file. Save this file as sound effects library or whatever makes sense to you. And now you can reuse the sound effect without having to redo it every single time. You can even adjust the colors or the layout of the lettering on a case by case, or should I say panel by panel basis. Have a blue explosion, select your clip layer, and then go to your menu, edit, tonal correction, hue, saturation, luminosity. Adjust these sliders to get the exact color that you want. To move the letters around, just select your object tool again, turn off the visibility of the clipping layer, and then click on one of the layers and adjust them all as needed, and then turn the clipping layer back on and you're done. You can also transform the entire sound effect by just clicking on the topmost folder and then going to edit, transform, scale, and rotate. If you try this technique out, be sure to drop a link to your comic in the comments so that we can check it out. Let me know if you run into any problems and I will do my best to help out. And of course, if you wanna keep making comics easier, be sure to like, link, love, hug, and hit that sub button for more sweet, sweet goodness. Remember, lettering is its own art form. Catch you in the next video. Peace.